Hey everyone, Mike here from Watch It Paint It, and in this video I'm going to show you the easiest possible way to magnetize the weapons on knights. I'm also going to share a few construction tips for armagers that I think are important to keep in mind when assembling them. Okay, tip number one, and I'm only sharing this because I've seen so many people doing the opposite. If you clean mold lines off of your miniatures, use the back of your blade, not the sharpened edge. If you use the edge, you're prematurely dulling the blade a bit, but even more importantly, you risk the edge snagging on something and skipping along the plastic. This can cause nicks and scrapes in your model. Tip number two. The leg design is different now on the armatures. The connectors used to be hexagons, and now they're rectangles. It was actually possible to attach these wrong, now it isn't. However, and this will be tip three, when you glue the legs on, press the feet flat on your table. The hips may not fit perfectly so that the feet will be flush with your base. So hold the hips in place and the feet flat on a table for 30 seconds after you add the glue to make sure the knight will sit correctly on the base. Tip number four, the top weapon does not need to be glued or even magnetized if you don't want to do that. It's got a wedge attachment point so if you push it in it's not going anywhere so you can easily detach it to swap it out. Tip 5 is sub-assembly, and this is actually footage from my next video. You pretty much have to do this with the knights, but I've minimized the pieces to four. The fully assembled legs, the upper body with no glue on the shoulder pads or the top gun, the shoulder pads are just held on with poster putty, and the two arms. Alright, time to magnetize the weapons. There are a lot of build options for the armagers. Here are just three of them, so you definitely want to magnetize. Here are the two types of magnets that you'll need for this, and I apologize that one is in metric and one is an imperial. The smaller magnet is a 3mm by 2mm, and the larger one is a 1 quarter inch by 1 16th inch. I'm going to be replacing this little connector on the end of the arm bit with two magnets of basically the exact same size. And here you can see in this side view that they're pretty much identical with the 3 by 2 millimeter magnet being slightly longer, which is good because we need to drill that into the arm a bit. So first, this bit needs to be cut off, and don't do it this way. Off camera, I smartened up and used a box cutter. Now I'm just smoothing out the spot where I cut. I want this nice and flat. Now I'll show you what the magnets will look like once they're in place. And you can see they fit pretty much perfectly. Once the weapon is assembled, it'll look like this. And now all I have to do is drill into the arm section until the arm bit sits flush on the weapon. And then glue the small magnet in place. Okay, random tip number six here. Anytime I start using my plastic glue, I pull out the needle and flip it. This will dissolve any clogs in the tip of the needle, which are going to happen all the time. Now I'm gluing one of the guns together, and I'm gluing the large magnet inside the weapon using super glue. I did test this with and without gluing the magnet, and you do want to glue it in place. Otherwise, the attached weapon will rotate around too much. Next, I need to drill out the magnet hole, so tip number seven, when drilling, always make pilot holes, creating the first hole by gently twisting your hobby knife. I've seen people do this step with a needle or a push pin, and it always gives me anxiety. That can turn into a lot of pain and swearing that you don't need. Eventually, I'm gonna be using a 1 8 of an inch drill bit for the two millimeter by three millimeter magnet, but I'm drilling out three guide holes first using successively larger drill bits. If you don't, you could stress the plastic and break whatever it is you're drilling. Once I'm ready to drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit, I'm putting the small magnet into place, and then I'll drill a small amount, test the fit, and then repeat until the arm sits flush with no wobble. Okay, tip number eight. Mark the ends of the magnets with a permanent marker to note the polarity before you glue them. I always mark the end that I should see when I glue the magnet. Always check and double check before you glue. Tip number nine. 
Next I'm adding a small dab of Gorilla Super Glue and I'm sticking in the magnet. I'm going to clean up any excess glue on the outside of the magnet with a toothpick so that it doesn't interfere with the arm sitting flush later. I also like to hold the magnet in place for about 30 seconds to a minute just to make sure it's going to stay sitting level until the glue starts to harden. What a great sound that is. Then you just want to make sure you align the magnets the same way on all the other weapons. One way to do this is to align the big magnet going into the weapon using the arm you just magnetized. Put the big magnet on the end of the arm and then place it into the next weapon using a bit of glue. Alright, the last thing I want to show is the model assembled, though I'll be holding the body at the waist together and the shoulder pads on with poster putty. Well that's it for the magnetizing and assembly. In the next video, I'll show how I get this painted up quickly and ready for the tabletop. Both Imperial Knights and Chaos Knights have a new codex now, both are 9th edition ready, and I'll talk more about the new codexes in a future video. I hope you found this video useful, and thanks for watching.